is Vedran Vukovac. I'm from Croatia and I'll just say a few words about me. I started hacking in late 80s. Not much to hack back in times, but still. Uh, my mentor was Emmanuel Goldstein from the 2600 and I'm a former member of Computer Chaos Club. Chaos Computer Club, yeah. Uh, at the moment, I work in the largest medical, private, privately owned medical company in Croatia. So, we'll just, oops. We're back online. So, see, not, I'm not a, a professor or teacher, I'll just help myself with, self with the notes because the team is really big and I think I could talk, I can talk about it about five, five or six hours, so I, I don't want to miss anything about it. So, <clears throat> how Russia controls the internet, that's, that's the big problem now. Uh, the Russian government is in fact increasing its pressure on the social media. Uh, the analysts have noted a surge in use of anonymous web surfing software like Tor. According uh, to data on the Tor metrics, the number of connecting users from Russia uh, passed from, in average, 30,000 in 2012 to more than 200,000 in June last year. Uh, as you can see on the picture, all the peaks are related to new extrajudicial uh, blacklisting. Those peaks are every single time when uh, a certain forum, news group or, or site was banned in, in Russia. Uh, the, the censorship in Russia could affect the most popular social media sites. Uh, it's clear that the Russian government fears the possibility that foreign governments uh, could destabilize the country or some uh, local areas with PSYOPs. In January 2013, uh, Vladimir Putin approved a decree that assigned uh, full powers to the FSB, which is Federalna Služba Bezapasnosti Rasijske Federacije, to create a state system for detection, prevention and liquidation of the effects of computer attacks on the information resources of the Russian Federation. Neither the FSB nor the Russian government have proved, provided further details on the program. In 2012, uh, the Russian government uh, deployed a system that is able to monitor internet activities uh, of millions of citizens and ban uh, content not approved by the central government. The project will use uh, new complex internet monitoring technologies to implement the single register that is able to spy on the internet activities. The register is populated with requests of censorship coming from the Roskom Nadzor. It's short, short from Federalna Služba pa Nadzoru v sfere sjazi informacijne tehnologiji i masovni komunikaciji. Agency for the Supervision of Information Technology Communications and Mass Media. Basically it's uh, GCHQ or NSA, Russian version of it. Roskom Nadzor applies court decisions and executes uh, orders of three government agencies, the Interior Ministry, the Federal Anti-Drug Agency and the Federal Service for the Supervision of Consumer Rights and Public Welfare. In July 2013, uh, Vladimir Putin signed a law that uh, contemplates also the possibility to put under judgment not only child pornography, but also online contents that expressed uh, dissent against the government. The agency has established a complete control of internet activities, exactly like many other countries, and it has in fact uh, the power to impose to the ISP to block the content, uh, contents within uh, 24 hours. Well, how does uh, this register operate? According to the article published in Wired, the, the government of Russia has deployed a system which implements a DPI, deep packet uh, inspection technology on a nationwide scale. DPI is the most advanced and intrusive on the, of inspection methods as it is able to analyze every single packet of the traffic. Many other governments in the world have adopted, including Iran and China. The system is named uh, SORM. Sistema Operativno Raziskalnih Maropriatnih, a system for operative investigative uh, 
activities. Uh, SORM 1 was established in 1996 to monitor telephone communication and it is substituted uh, by SORM 2 in uh, 98 to monitor the internet. ISPs uh, must install a device on their, devi their service to allow the FSB to track all credit card transactions, emails and web use. Oh boy, uh, first deputy director of the FSB, Sergei Smirnov, uh, declared that uh, new technologies are used by Western secret services to create and maintain a level of continual tension in society with serious intentions extending even to regime change. Uh, Russian elections, especially the presidential elections uh, and the situation in the preceding period revealed the potential of the blogosphere. Well, many companies uh, sell technology to Russia, such as the Canadian Sandwine, Israeli Alot, American Cisco and Procyr, and Chinese Huawei. Since 2013, the all mobile operators in Russia have deployed DPI. Every single one of them. So, uh, minor operations or minor operators have also searched for cheap solutions uh, found in the used market of uh, Cisco DPIs. DPIs predominantly used today in Russia are those from Cisco. Uh, SORM is a Russian system of lawful inter interception of all electronic communication. The system has been mentioned in numerous documents. Uh, in early 2013, the Bureau of Diplomatic Secret Security at the US State Department issued an official alert for US citizens wanting to attend the Winter Olympics in Sochi. It basically resembles the briefing instructions uh, for a Cold War era spy. You can read this in, in, in any James Bond movie. I'll just read the entirety because this is very important. Uh, consider traveling with clean electronic devices. If you do not need the device, do not uh, take it. Otherwise, essential devices should have all personal identifying information, sensitive files removed or sanitized. Devices with wireless connection capabilities should have the Wi-Fi turned off at all times. Do not check business or personal electronic devices with your luggage at the airport. Do not connect to local ISPs at cafes, coffee shops, hotels, airports or other local venues. Change all your passwords before and after your trip. Be sure to remove the battery from your smartphone when not in use. Technology is commercially available that can geotrack your location and activate the microphone on your phone. Assume any electronic device you take can be exploited. If you must utilize a phone during travel, consider using a burnt phone that uses a SIM card purchased locally with cash. Sanitize sensitive uh, conversations as necessary. But states in the US warning, it really says a little bit more about what NSA and GCHQ can do, not, not about Russia. So. The warning is clear and could give you an idea of the powerful capabilities of Russian intelligence. Uh, US authorities invited, invited Americans returning from Sochi to destroy their mobile devices. SORM appliances are distrib distributed in all the country and are connected via a protected underground network to the local FSB headquarters. SORM 2 obliges ISPs to provide the FSB with statistics on all internet traffic that passes through their servers. This is uh, possible with the installation of SORM appliances on their servers to route all transmissions in real time through the FSB monitoring platforms. In this way, the FSB is able to track every user's transactions, email communications and online browsing. SORM 3 is able to collect information from all forms of communications and analyze the huge amount of data collected. So, uh, fearing uprising like uh, the Arab Spring, the Russian FSB has increased the monitoring of social media platforms. Uh, Russian intelligence is aware of the potential, potential effects of the PSYOPs. And SORM is not the only system available for monitoring activities. There is uh, the analytical search system designed by the Russian company Analytic Business Solution called Semantic Archive. Uh, I'll just say a few uh, on the Semantic, few, uh, semantic Archive features are, features are <coughs> automated 
collecting and processing of information obtained from heterogeneous sources, both internal file documents, proprietary databases, emails, and external online databases, news media, blogs, forums, and social networks. Uh, it has also a single uniform storage for all types of collecting uh, documents, knowledge extraction, events and relationships from documents, maintaining of uh, knowledge base and collecting dossiers on particular projects, uh, revealing of hidden or implicit relationships between objects, visual presentation of knowledge in the form of a semantic network. A uh, uh, list of features goes like 60 or 70 pages. So this is just a, a little bit of expert, uh, excerpt from the semantic archive. According to the uh, description provided, the Semantic Archive allows the monitoring of any media archive, online source, blogs and social networks. It allows the composition of complex queries, providing also visual representation of the results obtained. The operation was successful with uh, Russian social networks Kontakte and uh, Odnoklasniki whose systems are hosted in Russia, but social networks, including Twitter and Facebook, excluded uh, this possibility. The Kremlin is attempting to force international social media companies operating on Russian soil to cooperate with the central government in compliance with the national law framework. <coughs> uh, the control over Ukrainian telecommunication systems was also possible thanks to the control of SORM equipment installed by the Ukrainian government. The Russian SORM surveillance systems are a reality, but the reality we are fully aware of, in contrary to the systems operated by the US and UK government. And yes, uh, technology used by the Russian government is very advanced, and it is a mix of best surveillance devices provided uh, by principal suppliers of uh, foreign countries. Uh, the fighting in Ukraine has escalated since the elections in uh, May last year. Then President-elect Petro Poroshenko, backed uh, by the European Union and US, ordered the National Army to strengthen its eastern border with Russia. Andris Razans, Latvian ambassador to the United States, uh, commented on the decision of the Russian government to pull back significant ground forces from the Ukrainian border, stating that the government of Moscow in reality is continuing information warfare against the adversaries. Well, security experts are aware of the powerful Russian army composed of highly skilled hackers able to hit any government with uh, covert operations and to design sophisticated cyber weapons for cyber espionage and sabotage. In uh, March, the BAE system revealed a cyber espionage campaign on a large scale that targeted systems all over the world, mainly the Ukrainian government ones. BAE system uh, is a British multinational defense, security and airspace company headquartered in London in the United Kingdom and with operations worldwide. It is among the world's largest uh, defense contractors. <coughs> the report issued by BAE demonstrated uh, the existence of a powerful spiral known as uh, Turla, which uh, compromised Ukraine systems more than any other country. But uh, there is no firm evidence to prove the malware was uh, developed by the Russians. Security experts believe that the Russian government is responsible. Uh, Curiously, hasn't hit any Russian systems. So. Limnell added, uh, it's been called the most sophisticated spying malware that's ever created. It's five to six years old. So it took Western companies five to six years to find this malware. And that's really concerning. We can just ima imagine what Russians have today. Russian malware is uh, sleeping in all sorts of Ukrainian critical infrastructure ready to wake up on command and wreak havoc with the electrical grid, financial system, and so on. <coughs> Limnell also uh, commented, when we think about cyber in Western countries, we usually think about DDoS attacks or cyber attacks on our critical infrastructure. 
cybersecurity is too often treated only as a technological problem. But from the Russian point of view, cyber is primarily in the information sphere, what the Soviets uh, would have called propaganda. The Russian government can also count on a dense network of patriotic hackers that systematically hit foreign government uh, networks. And Ukraine is probably within the principal targets of these groups. But Russia has also used online propaganda to destabilize its adversary. Social media are a new battlefield. Uh, the BuzzFeed uh, reported that the Russian government is recruiting and training a new army of online trolls to change global sentiment on its invasion of Ukraine. These trolls are spreading comments and uh, driving discussions on the principal online media outlets, including Fox News, Huffington Post, The Blaze, Politico and World Net Daily. The documents uh, report detailed instructions that describe the workload expected of their activity. So basically that's a usual daytime job, 9 to 5 job for, for Russian hackers or, or trolls. But on an average working day, the Russians are to post on news articles 50 times. Each blogger is to maintain six Facebook accounts, publishing at least three posts a day and discussing the news in groups at least twice a day. By the end of the first month, they are expected to have won 500 subscribers and get at least five posts on each item a day. On Twitter, the bloggers are expected to manage 10 accounts with up to 2,000 followers and to tweet 50 times a day. Oh, they are to post messages along themes called American Dream and I Love Russia. The archetypes uh, for the accounts are called Handkerchief, Gay Turtle, The Ghost of Marius and Giraffe, Left Breast and so on. So events such as the Arab Spring and the growth of political activism have alerted the Russian government to the risks related to the manipulation of information on social media done by uh, Western powers. Now a little bit about the Snake platform. Uh, experts at BAE Systems who discovered the Snake campaign have found evidence of a link between the Ouroboros rootkit, a malware used for espionage uh, campaigns discovered by the German firm GData. <coughs> malware experts at BAE also detected another piece of malware named Turla which I mentioned, this malicious uh, code was developed by Russians and there is the concrete possibility that Turla and Roboros have been developed by the same group which according to BAE could be part of a cyber weapon uh, program of the Russian government. Uh, the snake campaign remained undetected for a long time, at least for eight years. Another one, eight years. Researchers have also found a link to older pieces of malware, such as Agent BTZ, uh, a worm which infected US military networks and nearly 14,000 systems across 100 countries in 2013. Exactly like the predecessor agent and malware used for the Red October cyber espionage campaign, Turla seems to have been designed by Russian-speaking malware authors. Many reports provide information regarding the name of the files used, including the specific log file names and even the XOR uh, key. Turla and Agent BTZ have files with identical names, but the surprise is the presence of a file called tand.dd present in both Turla and Red October malware. And this is a, let's take a, uh, this, this is a distribution of uh, snake malware samples. It's a significant number of malicious code which target mainly the Ukraine and the Lithuania. So analyzing uh, the day of the week and hour of the day in which the malware samples were compiled, the experts have noticed a pattern already discovered in other state-sponsored cyber espionage campaigns. Malware developers operate a working week in working time. So it's factory time. The espionage campaigns malware uh, working time and has been adjusted to UTC plus four, which is Moscow time, of course. The last coincidence is that uh, Russian malware mainly hit Ukraine systems. Uh, group of hackers on both sides are actively engaging in online campaigns but mainly with DDoS attacks. Uh, most reliable, I don't know, 
how much you can see from there. But the most reliable way to discover net operation is to look for look for callbacks. So these are statistics for callbacks. And the communications initiated from compromised computers to an attacker's first stage command and control C2 server. At Fire uh, Eye, they detected and analyzed millions of such callbacks every day. Kenneth uh, Gears points uh, that as we track the evolution of callbacks during this period, we see a likely correlation between the overall number of callbacks both to Russia and to Ukraine and the intensification of the crisis between the two nations. Uh, there's a, you can see it, that Ukraine has jumped from 12 to 9, that's the uh, blue color, and the Russia has passed from an average 7th place to 5th place, that's the red color. But at the top it's still the United States. So, uh, the data, the the greatest jump in the malware callback data occurred in March. Exactly in the same period, the Russian government authorized the use of military force in the Crimea. Uh, here's an interesting table. Uh, look at the country at the top. That's Croatia, a small country for a big cyber crime. So at the same time, uh, when Croatia jumped to when it came to, to really being visible, it's the uh, same time when the CIA opened the uh, largest data center in southeastern Europe, in Zagreb. So, coincidence. So, please, conspiracy theories, welcome. Here. Uh, yeah, a little bit about Islamic State. Uh, what is ISIS? Uh, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria and the Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham is an unrecognized state and a jihadist militant group primarily operating in parts of Kurdistan, Iraq, Syria, now Libya and Nigeria, I think, also, but uh, spreads uh, rapidly through, throughout the Middle East. The group claims religious authority over all Muslims and aspires to a state which includes most of the countries in the Middle East. ISIS is known for its uncompromising interpretation of Islam. The group is responsible for brutal violence against Shia Muslims, Christians and other religious minorities. ISIS acquired great popularity last year. <coughs> the group stems from a clash inside Al-Qaeda uh, during the civil war in Syria when the group fought against another jihadist group named Jabhat al-Nusra Al Nasr Front, which was uh, very active against Bashar al-Assad forces. In 2014, the relationship with Al-Qaeda stopped because of the clashes with the Al Nasr Front, which is supported by the Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri. In June 2014, the Islamic State of Iraq and uh, the Levant and Aligned Forces started an offensive in the northern area of Iraq against government forces and Kurdish Peshmergas. This is a current situation, the grey ones are territories hold, held by the ISIS, basically it's the size of the UK. Uh, the group created by Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi uh, has a great appeal among young foreigners, especially Western youngsters. As usual, it is very interesting to study the dynamics in cyberspace to collect further information about the events and to understand the forces involved and their tactics. Iran is involving, involving their special forces, Quds, uh, that's uh, Jerusalem in Persian. Also, the US, U.S. is involved in the operations in Iraq, mainly for surveillance activities and uh, lately with aerial drone and bombers attacks. Security experts have noticed uh, an increase in the illegal cyber activities related to IP addresses in the range, as, uh, range assigned to the Iraq and Syria and also an increase of campaigns of activism related to the dispute in the area. Intel Crawler, a US-based cyber threat intelligence company, has published a post in which its experts analyze the Iraqi cyberspace. Intelligence researchers have analyzed the activities within the Iraqi ISP industry, discovering a significant increase in the number of cyber attacks during recent months. The experts observed a significant number of botnets uh, using dynamic DNS services. 
The circumstance could be related to ongoing cyber espionage campaigns on systems in the area. Uh, the attackers have used dynamic DNS services like NoIP and uh, Zap2 to allow the malware which infected the machines in the country to reach the CNC servers. The resolved IP addresses were related to subnets of various regional ISPs uh, in Iraq such as Goranet, IQ Earthlink, uh, IQ Networks, IQ Neuros and IQ Tarinet. The data uh, related to the malicious activities by internet service providers shows that Goranet was the ISP involved in the majority of malicious activities. So, cyber attacks uh, mainly used a popular RET, uh, NG RET, which allows attackers to gain complete control over the victims. In uh, March 2014, Symantec observed the growth of indigenous groups of attackers in the Middle East, which uh, adopted the NG RET for their attacks. The malware, uh, different from other RET, is developed and supported by Arabic speakers. Symantec also noted that several groups have used the RET to target government entities in the region. So Symantec analyzed uh, over 700 samples of NG RET and uncovered a fairly large number of infections with uh, 542 CNC server domain names. That's a, that's a huge number. Nearly 80% of the uh, CNC servers were located in regions in the Middle East and North Africa, including Saudi Arabia, Iraq, uh, Tunisia, Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, and the Palestinian territories and Libya. The malware includes most common data stealer uh, features like screen grabbing, key logging, and the ability to download and execute further malicious code on the infected systems. Well, the number of uh, groups located in Iraq are involved. Political and religious motivations are the primary reasons for the participation in the cyber operations. The popular group of activists, Anonymous, has announced a campaign dubbed Operation Note to ISIS against some nations suspected of uh, supporting IS, but uh, they failed uh, miserably. Nothing really happened. And as of today, no major anonymous uh, activity is noted in the territories. ISIS, on the other hand, uh, hand is active in cyberspace, and uh, though it hasn't yet demonstrated capabilities like the Syrian Electronic Army, it conducts an effective propaganda campaign uh, through the principal social media. Just to add that uh, <coughs> most members of the Syrian uh, Electronic Army are schooled in Russia. Uh, but uh, uh, social media are used by all sides for information and uh, disinformation campaigns. A pro-Islamic Hilf of Fazul Twitter account also accused ISIS of being supported by the US to destabilize the area and hit Iran-Iraq governments. On the other, si other side, a group which named itself ISIS Electronic Army is declaring war to Western countries and to the Anonymous. One of the most active members of the ISIS Electronic Army uh, is using the nickname KJ Fido, and he tweeted this message to the Anonymous. KJ Fido is considered uh, a cyber jihadist and an official member of the ISIS Electronic Army, despite there being no evidence that this group of hackers actually exists. One of the potential scenarios is an active continuation of uh, cyber attacks and developing of cyber warfare within the region for intelligence purposes between conflicting parties. Uh, most of the attacks use uh, public malware like uh, NG RET uh, from the other side. All the detected incidents were done in a very targeted and selective way. Uh, the ISIS is uh, consider a dangerous and destabilizing uh, factor in the balance of the Middle East and the group is acquiring popularity and is attract attracting a growing number of followers, many of them from Western countries. Uh, another worrying element is the economic capability of ISIS. Uh, most experts consider ISIS the richest jihadist group in the world. So I personally expect a lot more online activity uh, from ISIS, not just in social media, but as an active cyber war player. And just to add, most of the members from the 
Islamic State Electronic Army are from uh, Western Europe. No. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions? I have a question myself. So how accurate, um, or well, speaking broadly, if you go back uh, a few slides to, for instance, the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the attribution to certain groups, these attacks, how accurate are these, um, well, I could ask you personally, how accurate are these con to be uh, how, how considered? If they're Russian or? Yeah, how certain are people <coughs> It's easy well, to attribute it to some. Yeah, it is easy to It's, it's quite different from normal warfare, where you yeah. almost the bomb, the bomb fragments will literally yeah. say made in. And that, that is the, the main problem with cyber warfare. You can't uh, say for 100% that this side or, or that side attacked the other side or, or made any PSYOPs operation. And that's one of the reasons why I mentioned the CIA data center in Zagreb, because. Uh, at uh, that time, a lot of uh, Croatian uh, students, uh, either from IT or for companies, even linguists, were hired by NATO. And that's be, uh, before all the uh, situation in Ukraine. So Americans were prepared for cyber campaign or initiated cyber campaign. That, that remains a big question. So in a specific case like this uh, ISIL, uh, these ISIS and ISIL threats, yeah claim to be there. Uh, is there actually any really good external or third party confirmation or no, are they no. purposely or, or conversely is there any indication that they're specifically attributing these attacks no, to well, ISIL because it makes their point stronger? Yeah, they make point. ISIS, uh, ISIS electronic army is more like an uh, anonymous, anybody can call so them. Black so black flag, false flag. Yeah, basically. yeah, false flags everywhere. PSYOPs, that's the number one. So malware penetration and, and all this stuff are, are really irrelevant to the common people. PSYOPs is number one in cyberspace today. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Other questions? No questions at all. Hard to believe. Okay, thank you very much. Federal. Thank you.